She's been called the greatest living American actress. Just don't say that to her face. When I said greatest actress of your generation to her, she said, oh, please, Liz, drop that shit. But with 14 Academy Award nominations to her credit, Meryl Streep is hard to ignore, even if she is sometimes hard to recognize. I put Sophie's Choice and Silkwood side by side, and you go, wow, these are the same person. How is that possible? And even after more than 30 years and 40 starring roles, Meryl's own story may be the most improbable one of all. I didn't think I was, you know, pretty enough to be a movie star. Nothing to lose. Leads you to where you are today. I believe in storytelling. It's going to make you a star. I'm still trying to figure that out. Wow. It's been more than 30 years since Meryl Streep's big screen debut in a bit part in the movie Julia. But that doesn't mean we know a lot more about Meryl now than we did when we first met her. As a great actress who may or may not be more than just a sum of her many, many parts. I can't think of any star as hidden from us as Meryl Streep with the notable exception of Greta Garbo. Is she the boss from Devil Wears Prada? Is she Sophie from Sophie's Choice? Is she the southern singing maniac from Prairie Home Companion? You don't really know. There's this great difference between actors and stars. The star takes something in his or her persona and stamps every role with it. Streep is more of a chameleon, where each role is different, so it's very hard to get a sense of who she is. She wants to become somebody else. She doesn't want to play manifestations of Meryl Streep all the time. In fact, she built her career on very few people knowing who Meryl Streep is in the first place. Streep's held back who she is, and it's allowed us to accept from very, very different parts. I think she's been very intelligent in keeping the real Streep quite mysterious, quite hidden. Meryl wasn't always a woman of mystery. She was born in Summit, New Jersey on June 22, 1949. She was named Mary Louise Streep after her mother and nicknamed Meryl before she left the hospital. She grew up in suburban New Jersey. She was the child of an executive, and her mother was a housewife. Uh, in many ways, it was a deeply conventional childhood. Meryl's parents quickly recognized that Meryl had talent. By the time she was 12, her mom was driving her into Manhattan to study opera with legendary teacher Estelle Liebling. She had originally thought that she would become an opera singer as a teenager, and she was training and never really thought of acting so much as singing as, as her future. But even if Meryl always had the talent to make it big, during adolescence, she was insecure about her looks. She felt that she was weird somehow. Uh, I think uh, her name, the way she looked, what she wanted to be, she wanted to be a cheerleader. She said she wished her name was uh, Debbie or Patty and that she could be a cheerleader. She was a little shy, a little retiring. She had dark hair, and she ended up, she lightened her hair. She changed her looks a little bit. She became a cheerleader, and then she ended up becoming homecoming queen. But the biggest moment of Meryl's high school life was when she was cast in her high school's production of Oklahoma. And at the end, it was just like, whonk, the other reality comes in. Just that, um, that meeting between the proscenium and, uh, and the people was, you know, intoxicating. It was great. Meryl was the class valedictorian when she graduated from Bernardsville High School in 1967 and enrolled that fall at Vassar, one of the famous Seven Sisters Colleges. I didn't think I was, you know, pretty enough to be a movie star. Uh, I liked acting. You know, when I went to Vassar, I was in the drama department, but I took my degree in costume design. Meryl graduated from Vassar in 1972 and spent the next year performing theater classics in the mountains of Vermont. It wasn't Meryl's acting that left the audiences cold. We were trying to do summer theater through the winter in Vermont. We played in uh, ski lodges and doing checkoff, and people were like, <laughs> That winter, Meryl applied to law school. But when she slept through a key interview, she took it as a sign. And instead, armed with recommendations from her professors at Vassar, she applied for and was accepted at the Yale School of Drama. She had an immediate impact. Virtually from the second she arrived at Yale, she was recognized as a phenomenon. Nobody in my experience has ever had the impact that Meryl Streep had, where you started to hear that buzz, 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 buzz when she was doing graduate work. 
I believe she did 80 different theater productions. That's an incredible uh, experience and, and emphasis on acting and technique. And they gave Meryl most of the leads, and it was, of course, wonderfully flattering, but she started to get exhausted. I think at one point she had to go and say, please leave me out of one play, would you? In fact, Meryl's intense production schedule left her with an ulcer. It was one of the few things she brought with her when she moved to New York in the spring of 1975. She was almost 27 years old. There have been hundreds of thousands of actors, at a minimum, who have come to New York in their mid-20s, and the truth is that we haven't heard of most of them. Today, at 27 years old, you're finished. It's like, what? You know, are you gonna play mothers? Meryl's Yale connections got her cast in small off-Broadway plays, but when it came to impressing the New York theater scene's movers and shakers, Meryl had a bumpy ride. When she booked an important audition with the public theater's Joe Papp, she did the same thing she did when she applied to law school. She slept right through it. I dread any kind of big test where it all matters on that one moment, you know. Meryl had to beg Papp's casting director for another chance, and she made the most of it. Papp ultimately cast her in Measure for Measure, one of the earliest productions of New York's now legendary Shakespeare in the Park. I first saw her in Measure for Measure in 1976, and uh, she just, she blew me away. She was very funny, she was very bawdy. I mean, you just couldn't take your eyes off of her. Meryl's co-star in Measure for Measure was John Cazale, who was already famous for playing Fredo in the Godfather films and Al Pacino's sidekick in Dog Day Afternoon. Here's Meryl Streep coming out of Vassar and Yale and meeting somebody who has these same feelings about what acting is. That's the connection that they had. You can only imagine how romantic that must have been. These two actors meeting each other, doing theater outdoors in New York City in the summer. Uh, they went head over heels for each other. By the time Measure for Measure finished its run, Meryl and John were engaged. You wouldn't necessarily look at these two and think those two are going to be a couple. Uh, Meryl Streep was ravishing at that point. <laughs> she was 27 years old. John Cazale was pushing 40. Um, not a conventionally handsome man, but there was some chemistry between them. There were some sparks on stage and off stage. But in less than 18 months, their love affair would come to a heartbreaking end. It's a story that even many close to Meryl have never heard. Meryl said she was shocked. I think she was too close to it. She didn't expect it. 